there guys, this is Mr. Herbst here, and today my focus is going to be on the respiratory system. Now, what is the function of the respiratory system? Well, uh, when you think of respiratory, you should primarily think of your lungs. And what do your lungs do? They take in oxygen and give off carbon dioxide. Now, you may know by now that your bodies need oxygen in order to work. That oxygen is involved in a process called cellular respiration, which breaks down our food. As a waste product or a waste gas, we give off carbon dioxide. And then plants use the carbon dioxide to produce their food and uh, uh, ultimately allow them to grow. So um, the brain, as with most things, the brain controls almost everything in our bodies, uh, controls our respiratory rate. It controls our breathing rate. More specifically, there's an area of our brain called our medulla oblongata. Uh, it, it's the, the lower part of our brain called our brain stem. Right in here is uh, where the medulla oblongata is. The medulla oblongata primarily controls our respiratory rate, or otherwise known as our breathing rate, and our heartbeat. Uh, so it is ultimately here, guys, what is keeping us alive at any moment. Uh, breathing is a process that we call somewhat involuntary. Now, you know, of course I can, you know, of course I can hold my breath and I can concentrate on my breathing. But when I'm not thinking about it, my breathing just kind of happens on its own. So it's sort of a, a somewhat involuntary process. There are a lot of parts to the respiratory system. I'm going to sort of work my way from the top down. The first part, from in, right here in the back of the throat, is called the pharynx. Um, more commonly, we refer to that as the throat. Uh, that is right in here. That's the area where air can come in through the nose and also the area where air or food can come in through the mouth. It's where all those places sort of meet up. It allows for the passageway of air or food. Underneath of that, or the, uh, 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 the area where actually air, air enters into the lungs, is called our trachea. That is, uh, the, if you ever felt those bumps right in there, that is part of our trachea. Uh, those, little, those little ring, like bumpy things you can feel on your throat. Those, uh, that is part of your trachea, or AKA your windpipe. It allows for the passage of air. Now you may know, if you ever get food or drink uh, down your windpipe, you know, <coughs> you cough like crazy. We don't want food and, air and water or drinks to go down into our lungs. That's bad. Um, that would eventually suffocate us. So our body has this little organ called our epiglottis that uh, folds over or covers up the windpipe or the trachea um, and allows food to only go one direction, and that's down through the esophagus and into our stomach. Lining the lungs is the, this lining of cilia and mucus. Cilia are like little finger-like projections that, are, that line all the inside of our lungs. And they, uh, they uh, here, I'll show you guys a picture. They look like this. Um, they're little finger-like projections, and what they do is they beat in one direction. They move, they move uh, mucus, which is produced by, by the cilia, up towards our throat. So it moves it from the, the bottom up. And all the particles, every time you breathe, you're breathing in dust and pollution and all this stuff. And... Uh, it, everything that the mucus sort of collects gets pushed up to your throat and then you swallow it. And then it goes down into your stomach and the stomach acid kills whatever was found in that mucus. It's actually a, a way our bodies keep clean, as, as sort of gross as it might sound. Now right here, this is healthy, the healthy lung cilia. Here you can see a lot of cilia missing. Take a guess what type of person you would find that in. Yeah, that's right. This is actually um, the inside of a smoker's lung. Um, you can see that the, the smoker's lung has a lot of cilia missing and dead and just not working correctly. That, that causes for a problem. Um, that the cilia can no longer properly move the mucus up towards the throat, and then guess what you have to do in order to get it up? Uh, this is why smokers cough like crazy, because they, are, they have that mucus buildup in their lungs. So going back here, um, another uh, organ that's in our respiratory system is called our larynx. You may have heard of this disease before called laryngitis. It's when you lose your voice. So the larynx is the area where the vocal cords are, um, are housed. The vocal cords are like two little flaps on the inside of the, uh, of the larynx. And then when they flap together, it produces sound. Check out this little clip. Um, Steven Tyler, the lead singer of Aerosmith. He, this is a picture of, of a, uh, they put a camera down into his throat and they, they watch what happens to his vocal cords as he sings. Check it out.
This is Steven Tyler outside. And in. Every time we exhale, we force air through our two membranous vocal cords. When we bring them together, they vibrate. These vibrations produce sound, much like a guitar string after it's been plucked. Muscles open and close the cords and change the sound's pitch. During low notes, the cords are loose and vibrate more slowly. But for those falsettos, his chords stretch to the limit and vibrate virtually off the charts. A surprisingly simple feat for Tyler's pliable chords. So pretty cool, huh? That little flapping right there is what is allowing me to speak to you right now. All right, so um, there are several parts to our lungs that I'm going to go over. The first car part is called our branchi. branchi. So going down from the, from the trachea, the air can go one of two directions, either left or right. It travels through a larger tube called the bronchi and it allows for lung air to enter into each right or left lung. Now eventually the, the airways branch off and branch off. Those little branches are called bronchioles. They're smaller divisions in, that allow air to move. And eventually the air comes to an end or stopping point. That is called the alveoli. The alveoli is a little cluster, looks like grapes, um, where it's actually the site of gas exchange. Oxygen goes into the blood and carbon dioxide comes out of the blood and we exhale the carbon dioxide. The alveoli uh, are very very sensitive. Smokers tend to, um, you, you may know that, that smokers build up tar in their lungs. Well that tar sort of builds up in the alveoli and doesn't allow for uh, proper uh, gas exchange and that is a problem because you know if, if you're trying to exert yourself you just simply smokers just simply can't get enough oxygen into their bodies fast enough to keep up with demand eventually what can happen is that these uh, if, if people smoke long enough they can develop a disease called emphysema You might have heard of that on commercials um, emphysema is where the alveoli actually collapse and it's irreversible damage to the alveoli and eventually it leads to um, shortness of breath and ultimately can even lead to, to death. The next part of the uh, respiratory system is the muscle. What is controlling actually the, the moving of the air? Well, it's called the diaphragm. And it's a large flat muscle right in here. It's on the bottom of the lungs. And when it contracts, it forces air into the lungs. And then when it relaxes, it forces air out. Here's sort of a, a side view a picture of uh, what is happening. When the diaphragm, which is right in here, when it contracts, it's going to pull down on the lungs like this and force air to go in. Then it causes also, you know, the, uh, the, your ribs. When you take a, a deep breath in, your ribs have to expand in order for that extra air uh, in your lungs. And then when the diaphragm relaxes, it pushes up on the lungs uh, and the air out of your nose or mouth. Anyway here guys, that's going to conclude uh, the respiratory system. Make sure you complete the Google form below. This is Mr. Herbst here. I'm signing off. Y'all have a nice day.